can anybody tell us why it doesn't match what we see? Where's the gravity? Why is it not being demonstrated in this in this illustration? And why are we being told Mickey Mouse physics to explain why it doesn't happen? He is coming. Cover your butt. Um, he's just measured the rock at eight, uh, 400 grams. Okay. Now he's measuring the rock in the density known as air, the air that we breathe. Now he measures the rock in water, and from 400 grams, it drops down to 150. The 10 year old mind of Anthony Riley is having a very hard time understanding buoyancy. It is apparently such a difficult concept that even after having a physicist like Hector explain it to him, he is still struggling to understand the concept. So let's have a little bit of a lesson here on why the rock weighs less inside of the water than it does out in the air. So let's start with the basics. When you place an object inside of water, it will have forces acting upon it from all sides. The water will press against the object from all sides. When it comes to the weight of an object, the two forces that we have to worry about is a downward force and an upward force. When you have something as thin as the plate that is used to actually measure the force on a scale, the amount of force that is being applied downward and the amount of force that is being applied upward pretty much add up to zero. So when you just stick a scale inside of water, you will have pretty much a zeroed out scale. When he's put the rock in, his point he's making now is that he'll still get 150 grams if he lifts the, the scales back up towards the top. Which means the weight of the water on top of the um, brick isn't making any difference until he takes it out of the environment it's in. Like we just talked about, the amount of force that is applied to an object is equal all around the object. Even if you were to get a deeper container, say a container that went a mile deep, and you were to stick a scale a mile deep into your container, the scale would still be at zero because the amount of pressure that it's feeling from the top is equalized by the amount of pressure that it is feeling from the bottom. The amount of forces are equal. And that's important, which is why you will not see, and you should not expect to see, a difference in the weight when you move the scale up or down. The amount of force that is applied to the top of the scale is equal to the amount of force that is being applied to the bottom of the scale. So it changes its, its density based on the environment it's in, not based on gravity. And I agree absolutely with this. This is exactly what he's showing. When he does the, the measurement in the, um, in, the, in the atmosphere, the thing changes compared to when you put it in the water. Shouldn't, it shouldn't do that because there should be a weight of water pulling down on it inside the thing, inside the, thing, inside the, 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 the water bucket. Here, here is where the stupid starts. Anthony, you are not wrong in expecting there to be a downward force on the rock and the scale. What you are failing to remember is that there is an equal amount of force pushing upward on the scale. In your excuse as to why there should only be a force downward and not a force upward is such a stupid and deliberate misunderstanding of what Hector told you. Why doesn't the water have weight? It does. Little thought experiment. Let's say you have a container of water with water in it, and you have a pipe down here. And you basically have a small piston in here, and you're measuring how much the water is pressing against that piston. Yeah. What exactly is pressing against that piston? The weight of water. Exactly. Now, mm -hmm. how uh, the weight of what water kind of is pressing against the piston? I'd say it's only the water that's immediately above the valve. Exactly. It's basically the, w the weight of that water. Yeah, there. The question that was asked was why the water has no weight. 
And Hector gave a beautiful answer to this question. He explained a way in which you can measure the amount of force that the water is applying on an object. In order to do this, what we have to do is measure the force from one direction at a time. Remember, if an object is submerged in water, it is having a force applied to it all around it. So if you want to measure how much that force is, all you have to do is get rid of the forces that are pushing against the bottom, the side, and every other direction, and just focus on one direction. The way that Hector decided to do this was to focus on just the downward direction, the force that was being applied downward. He did this by eliminating all the forces that would be pushing the water upward. By taking the water and funneling it through a tube, you no longer have water underneath it pushing it up. This will let you get the amount of force that is being applied to an object that is submerged at that depth. Anthony then goes on to purposely misunderstand this concept. So what he's saying is the, the weight of the column of water immediately above the rock is weight. The column of water directly above the scale is exerting a force downward that is equal to the amount of force that the water below the scale is exerting upward. So why is it that when the rock is in the water, the weight doesn't appear to exist? Think about what he's saying. Think about what you're looking at right here. We've replicated that exact point that he's saying. No. No, you have not. You have replicated absolutely nothing. You got everything wrong about what Hector told you on how to measure the amount of force downward by the column of water directly above a scale. He told you how to do this, and he told you how to do this in a way that it eliminates the force of water pushing upward but you deliberately fail to understand this point. You are not in any way, shape, or form running the exact same experiment that Hector told you to run. You are deliberately running a different experiment, a different experiment that will get you different results. And then you are turning around and saying, look guys, I got different results, therefore Hector is wrong. It is not Hector who is wrong. It is you who is wrong in your incompetence in recreating an experiment that someone told you to do. And he's saying in his, in his explanation that the weight of the water is the only the column above it. So what's the weight of the water above this column? Wouldn't it be added to the weight of the stone that just weighed in at 400 grams? Shouldn't this be 420 grams, 450 grams, 480 grams? Why is it weighing 150? So you have a couple of interesting questions. So let's answer those real fast. Mainly, why doesn't the rock weigh more in the water? Shouldn't the weight of the water above it give it more weight on the scale? The simple answer is no, because the force of the water underneath the scale is pushing upward. But why doesn't the rock weigh 400 grams inside of the water as it does outside of the water? When you put an object inside of water, it displaces that water. That water that is being displaced pushes back on the object. The amount of force that is being applied upward is equal to the weight of the water that is being displaced. If you were to take a container and filled it to the very top, then dropped your rock in it, collected the water that had been displaced and weighed it, that weight would be equal to the force that is being applied upward. In other words, in order to find out how much the rock would weigh, you would simply need to take the difference between the force that is applied by the rock downward minus the weight of the water that was displaced. Now, it wouldn't be a flat earth video if we didn't have a dishonest asshole to talk about. 
And Anthony, you are that dishonest asshole. You are deliberately stupid. You intentionally misrepresent what Hector has told you in order so that you can deliberately misunderstand what he has said. In this way, you get to pretend like Hector is making no sense when in fact it is you who is deliberately misunderstanding him. You see, everything that I have talked about in this video, Hector has already explained to you. And you even use some of those clips in your own video. You could put, <laughs> you could put a pair of scales, you could put a rock or anything in that tank at the bottom. The weight of that water, be, when it's in the water, the weight of the water is not pushing down on that object. Yes, it is, but interestingly, the weight of the water is pushing against that object from all sides. The pressure of the water at that altitude times basically the area of your piston, because, for, uh, because a pressure is force o uh, over area. Oh. Now, in, and that, that force that you feel um, isn't really dependent on which direction anything faces then you will have the force pushing against both the top side of that scale as well as the bottom side. And in essence, both of those areas are about the same. And basically sure, the reason why you don't feel heavier underwater is because it's both pressing against you from the top as well as from the bottom. It's not just that Hector explained to you how buoyancy works over and over again. It's that you even ask him the very question that you are asking in this video as to why we do not feel the pressure of the water solely coming from the top. And Hector answers this question for you. Now, again you could be lying at the bottom of this pot and you will not feel the weight of the water pushing down on you which is said to be pulled to the earth because of well, the force of gravity created by the mass of the earth you are going to feel that weight of the water as pushing against your body from all sides, but you're not going to feel like there's just a massive weight on your back pushing you down. Why not? Because there's also um, kind of the same weight pushing against you from the bottom because of the pressure. Anthony, you're a dishonest asshole. You have intentionally misrepresented Hector's explanation on how to measure pressure to mean that there should only be a downward force. When you directly asked Hector why a submerged object doesn't feel only the downward force, you get an answer to your question. You then go on to either ignore the answer or deliberately misunderstand it. All so that you can pretend to have stumbled upon some mystery the physicist cannot solve. All so that you can continue to boast about a false victory. Anthony, you are not stupid by circumstance. You are stupid by choice.